Josh, it's up, good to see you again. See you, How buddy. are you? Um, so uh, thanks for joining us uh, this afternoon, day one, Hampton Creek. Yep. So for some people who aren't familiar with what you do and what Hampton Creek actually does, can you give me like the elevator pitch in like 30 seconds or less? Sure. Um, for the next couple of days, all of us in the world are going to eat a lot of shitty food. My dad's going to eat shitty food. You guys are probably going to eat shitty food no matter where you go. But you're not bad people. My dad's not a bad person. The problem is with the system, most of that food is shitty because it's bad for the environment, not so good for our bodies, but it tastes really good and it's cheap. So therefore, I do it, you do it, you do it, my dad does it. So what we do at Hampton Creek is to try to create a different world where good food, food that's a little bit better for our body, a little bit better for the planet, is so obnoxiously better than not so good food that even if you don't care, you choose it. And uh, how do you, uh, uh, the nitty gritty, how do you actually enable that? So there that are, like? Yeah, so that's, there are, um, a lot of different approaches, I think, to making food better, but our approach, the one that we have been powering away on for the last three years is that there are 400,000 plants around the world, 400,000 different species of plants. Most of them haven't been explored. We got really addicted to soy, we got really addicted to corn. So what we do is screen through them, try to find the best of them, and ultimately use them to make food better. And the cool thing about plants is, because we got so addicted to lots of soy and lots of corn, we forgot that Something as simple as a Canadian yellow pea, for example, one of the 400,000 plant species is made up of all these subtypes. And all these different subtypes of the Canadian yellow pea have all these different molecular properties. So we have a team of data scientists and biochemists and food scientists that are able to link some of these molecular properties to food functionalities. And that's the different kind of tech approach that we have to, to making it easier. Got it. So your startup is about three or four years old, correct? Three. Three years old. Yep. So you're using um, proprietary technologies and so forth. Uh, that being said, there are companies out there that are much more entrenched. Uh, they've been around for decades. They're making products. You have two products, correct, right now? There's Just Mayo, and there is Just, just Cookies. That's it. Yeah, which yeah. is uh, basically cookie dough. Yep. That's it. So, you know, that being said, how do you guys compete on price point? Are you using, yeah. like, newer scientific research, R&D technologies, yeah. and you know, they're competing against, like, you know, Hellman's in yeah. Safeway or something. How are you competing on that? So here's, here's the best example of what we do. The, the largest food service company in the world is called Compass Group. They're publicly traded. Most people here have never heard of the Compass Group. Um, and they serve university cafes. They work at Google's cafe. They're in Microsoft. They're in Boeing. They're in HP. They're in hospitals all across the country you've never even heard about. We struck a deal with them where all of their, let's just call them shitty cookies, are out and all of the better kind of Hampton Creek cookie is in. Better price point, a little bit less expensive. The so, central reason why it's less expensive, to your point, is we have a different approach of making it. So we kind of take some things out that are a little bit too expensive, in this case, butter and chicken eggs, how much, and we replace it with the plant. How much less expensive are we talking? Can you like give me yeah. like a side-by-side -side comparison of two products? So take, take this cookie. So normally they would be buying this cookie for roughly, um, let's just say, like $55 a case, let's say. So roughly, we're about $10 less a case okay. than they would be buying these cookies for. And, and why it's exciting for us is the death of us, JP, is being branded as kind of the alternative substitute company for people that give a damn, right? right. We're not into sort of tapping into conscious consumerism. In fact, we think the way the good thing wins is by almost ignoring the conscious consumers and just by making something as simple as a cookie so much better, again, that even if you don't care, you still end up choosing it. So, I mean, to say that your products are A, cheaper, but B, to actually taste, be actually taste better, yep. uh, pretty ballsy. Yep. So how do you actually establish, you know, our product, your products actually taste better? Yeah. I mean, we're talking like blind taste tests. So I, 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 think the, I think the best example is why would this largest food service company in the world, they've literally taken Unilever, the company that uh, I know we'll get into maybe in a little bit, that, yeah, that, yeah. that had some issues with some of the things we've been doing. They've taken their regular mayo, and they've said, let's move it out of the way. And they've said the Hampton Creek Mayo is in. It's called Just Mayo. And the same thing for the cookies. They're doing it for a few reasons. And I guess I think that's the biggest taste validation, the fact that they would do it. A billion gallons of water, JP, are saved because of that simple switch that they're making, because our products use less water. They're saving a little bit of money. And they believe, again, Compass Group, this largest food service company, that it tastes better. But we got some really awesome chefs, people like Andrew Zimmer and people like Richard Blaze, um, that have also said we like it. 
Well, let me ask you. You said a billion gallons of water saved One annually. One billion gallons How, of water saved. Uh, that's a lot, especially in a state like California, which yeah. is in severe drought. But how is that actually possible? How do you guys like do that? So take, we, we ask ourselves a question as a, as a company. What would it look like if we started over? And again, take a cookie. Just a simple example of a cookie. You all eat lots of cookies. We don't go on eating the cookies thinking that we're doing something bad, right? It's just a, a damn cookie. But it turns out that a lot of ingredients in a cookie are sucking up way too much water. In this case, too much butter, a lot of chicken eggs. And to make those chicken eggs that go in the cookie, for example, you need lots of cor corn and soy to feed all those chickens. And all that requires a lot of land and all that requires a lot of water. It's just an example. We do things outside the chicken egg. But instead of using those water sucking kind of ingredients, instead we use plants that don't suck up a lot of water. In this case, a grain called sorghum and something called a Canadian yellow pea. Soy gum? Sorghum. 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 From okay, the Midwest. Sorghum. Got it, got it. Um, so you guys have raised, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, $120 million total, right? That's right. And you have backers like Li Ka Shing, uh, one of the wealthiest, if not the wealthiest uh, man in Asia, yep. uh, Peter Thiel's Founders Fund, uh, a, a slew of other people. And Bill Gates has basically said, he actually has said that uh, Hampton Creek is one of the three companies leading the reinvention of food. Uh, coming from Bill Gates, obviously, that's, those are lofty uh, words indeed. Yeah. Um, so, uh, why do you, I mean, I mean uh, let's talk a bit more about that. Let's, yeah. let's unpack that. I yeah. mean, the food space is so huge. I think food tech, I think like, yeah. There's Hampton Creek, there's also like Grubhub, there's also like yeah. Foodily, and there's, there's a, a bunch of things. So, I mean, what sort of What's really makes you stand out? I mean, is it like the, is it the fact that you're saving a billion gallons of water a year? I think, I think there are a couple reasons that we've, had, we've been lucky to grow so fast and these folks have supported us. You know, one is, and you, you made the point, JP, food is a system. Typically, people don't think about food as a system. Why, well, healthcare is a system, education is a system, but food is a system that is archaic that is really just shitty in every respect. Like if we were gonna start a new food system today, if we were gonna do it together with the audience here, there's no way in the world we would start a food system that looks like it does today. So I think part of our advantage is this idea, we call it first principles thinking, Elon Musk obviously does it too, of what the hell would we do if we actually started over? But in that simple question that we ask propels a different approach when it comes to technology. It's a question that's I think a little bit audacious to ask and then a technology that attempts to answer it. And we've also you know, done more than just say it. We've actually been out in the marketplace. So you can find our stuff in right. Walmart, one that I'm probably the most proud of. We're in the Dollar Tree, right? The Dollar Tree, so okay. We don't, we don't, yep. Sometimes when people hear about Hampton Creek, they say to me, you know, congratulations, Josh. I bet my friends who shop at Whole Foods and who shop at Rainbow Grocery will love you. And we love that they choose our products too. But the power of what we do is to say, there are people that are living out of a white envelope. There are people out there that normally eat shitty food because they don't even have the means to do something different, but we want to be there for them too. So how do you sort of bridge the gap then between, I mean, you, you're on a lot of shelves now, um, obviously, and shelf space is very, very valuable yeah. uh, for retailers. Uh, how, was it a very hard sell getting on Safeway, uh, Whole Foods, a bunch of other places? So the, it, it's a funny story about how we got into Whole Foods. There was actually, there was an article written about us that for whatever reason ended up on the front page of the Drudge Report. And for, as Morgan knows, our comms director, for about 24 hours, we had journalists all across the country calling, saying like, what the hell is going on with this company? And then one of the leaders at Whole Foods called me up and said, I don't know who you guys are, but people keep calling into my customer service line asking where your products are. Um, and then in a very short period of time, we launched a product with Whole Foods. We got it out there quickly. We did well at Whole Foods. And then it's just been a whirlwind ever since. And we we keep on pumping out products. We keep on telling compelling stories around it. People keep on buying it. Speaking of that, what are sales looking like? Um, growing pretty fast. So we're going to have far and away our best month ever. Uh, this month or last month we did uh, double our sales last month compared to any previous month. And what do those look like? Don't want to get into the revenue yet, but um, but it's strong. I mean, it's when you think of you know some of the fastest growing companies out there. I like to think that we're in that category. Got it. So let's talk about, you know, when I think about a lot of fast growing startups, they sort of have what I like to call the, uh, their Airbnb moment. Airbnb ran to a situation several years ago where uh, one, uh, one home was vandalized and that forced them to uh, create an insurance policy. Um, you had, uh, this is very different, but you had a sort of a, a controversial moment of your own last year, Unilever. Yeah. 
um, one yep. of the largest consumer goods companies in the world, basically launched a lawsuit against you guys, basically saying, hey dude, just mayo, you're, uh, you're, you can't really use the word mayo because yep. it doesn't have eggs in it. Yep. Um, so talk a little bit about that experience. Yep. Yeah, so for, for the folks that haven't heard about that lawsuit, so we have this product called Just Mayo, so let's just pretend for representative purposes this is Just Mayo. Um, technically, according to the federal definition of mayonnaise, as you guys are probably well familiar with, you actually need chicken eggs in the mayo. You also need a per particular percentage of oil. Well, our mayo, for reasons that relate to sustainability and taste and some other things, actually do not have chicken eggs, okay? So it's mayo, not mayonnaise, but again, the federal standard says mayonnaise. So Unilever, maker of Hellman's, which you might be familiar with, or Best Foods, said, you can't call it mayo, um, you're tricking people. So we stood up and we said, well, number one, it's mayo instead of mayonnaise, but I think more importantly, the whole point of our company isn't to be a mayo company. I don't give a damn about being a mayo company. We're trying to be a company that thinks about food in a compelling and a different way for everyone that we don't want to be forced to call ourselves what they want to call ourselves. Just mayo vegan alternative. Just alternative mayonnaise for people that care. Just alternative substitute. That that kind of thinking for us pushes us, instead of what you said, JP, out of the main shelf space into that area that maybe your sister who cares about the world shops at. And although we love the sister, we don't want to just market to her. And so what we did is we stood up, we said we're not going to change her label. And over 100,000 plus people signed a petition on change.org. Tens of thousands of people called Unilever's headquarters saying back off. And eventually their CEO, Paul Pullman, who's actually a good dude, got involved and said, this isn't us, so we're going to withdraw the lawsuit after $23 million in prepaid media. So that, that was the cause? They literally, they literally just... Uh... I don't think it was this close, actually, in the, head, in, the, in the news stories that resulted. Literally, they just had like a change of conscience, basically? So I'll, I'll tell you exactly, exactly how it happened. So we were, we were negotiating, um, and I, we kept being open with them, saying, listen, we're not going to change our label. This is who we are. The day we announced our fundraise, the day we announced our fundraise, Morgan, who's mm -hmm. sitting over there, knows it. Which was like 90 million at a valuation of 500 million. It, the, the, day we, the day we announced it, so <laughs> we, were, we were sitting there, and the head of North American Foods calls me up, and he says, we've decided to withdraw the lawsuit. Um, we're not asking anything from you. We've just decided to withdraw the lawsuit. Um, and you know, for us, it was, it was a moment where you know, we had a backbone. We stood up for what we believed in. And um, it, it, again, I think, it speaks to this idea that you can look at big food or big companies as, you know, those are kind of the bad people, but, you know, listen. We want, if Unilever, through that experience, ends up being a little bit more innovative and creating better food, like, amen to that. I mean, we got a world, we're gonna have, we're gonna have over nine billion people on the planet by 2050. It can't just be him to create this making better food. We have to get lots of different companies in, and I would say for the entrepreneurs in the audience here, if you're thinking about starting your next thing and you're wondering about systems to go after that are particularly archaic, you know, that really need a new approach, food should be at the top of your list. So quick question, to circle back to, you know, because I'm a business reporter. So, if your products are cheaper, taste better, using, use newer technology, I mean, do you make money still? I mean, is there a significant profit margin off your products? Yeah, yeah, we do, yeah. I mean, it's just a matter of, I mean, obviously we have a whole bunch of different products and lots of different channels, but I can tell you, a number of the SKUs have really good profitability with both the Compass Group, with Target, with, uh, with Walmart, with a lot of other retail consumers we have. We also work with a big food company called General Mills. Mm. So General Mills, we sell an ingredient to General Mills, and there's a really nice profit margin on that ingredient too. So, you know, we're not going to be, our goal is not an acquisition. We could, one of the biggest companies in the world could write me a check for three and a half billion dollars right now, and I wouldn't do it. But our goal is to do what it looks like to be a permanent company that leaves a mark, and instead of you know doing what I was doing in Africa, instead of half my team probably working for nonprofits, they said they want to be a part of something that hopefully has a bit of an impact. So not three and a half billion, but seven billion maybe. Um, not even seven billion. Right. And I'll, t I'll tell you why, honestly. It's number one, I, I would hate my life because I wouldn't have any fun anymore, and this is too much fun. And, and two is. We, we really think there's an opportunity to, to change it in such a drastic way that for us, the impact of a billion, a billion gallons of water, JP, saved this year 
It's also three billion milligrams of sodium. It's also a billion and a half milligrams of cholesterol. There's also a lot of land, and, and that's just this year. We got a long way to go. So let me ask you, you know, um, I definitely see what you guys are doing and I definitely respect what you're doing. That being said, I think two weeks ago at work, um, we got a box and it was filled with cookie dough. <laughs> it was not your cookie dough. Oh, no. So there are oh, certainly boy. a number of companies out there that are trying to do what you're doing. What company, what company was this? I uh, shall remain nameless. Okay. We'll, just keep it, we'll keep it nameless. Okay. But, um, was it Otis Spunkmeyer, JP? Uh, no comment. Okay. No All comment. Right. Okay. But I mean, what do you, how can you, how do you plan to continue to differentiate yourself yeah. you know, against other companies out there that are trying to do the same things with products both from incumbents but from upstarts as well? Well, so you know, we're, we're not a cookie dough company. We're not a mayo company. So one thing is there are a whole range of categories that you guys are going to be eating in the next three weeks that, again, unbeknownst to you, you're putting lots of shit in your body. So we want to attack all those categories and make them a lot better. But what's really interesting about the approach we have there's also these new categories that we can create. I'll give you an example. I, I spent time in Monrovia, Liberia, in Cape Town, South Africa, in Lagos, Nigeria. Two and a half billion people around the world, two and a half billion live in a state of energy poverty. They don't have refrigerators. What does it look like for a company to actually think about their needs, to think about their lives, and create new categories of food specifically for them? And I don't know what the, I don't know what the answer to that is, JP, but what my point is, when you have a world that is built upon this this addiction to soy and corn, where you sort of build up a supply chain based in 1971 instead of looking different, where you make products that align with that. But when you pull out of that world and you sort of tear down the scaffolding of the own jail cell that you built in your mind and you say, like, what the fuck can we do if we really want to do something badass? You open up a lot of opportunities. I'll be sure to quote you on that uh, in the headline. Uh, what the fuck? Um, but, okay, so I mean, I'm, we're here. You got you to you eventually tell me that company. Now. I, I will off stage. Okay. Um, but you know, we're here. You've just educated these people. Uh, retailers are certainly educated as to what you're doing. But here's the thing: is like, I have a lot of cousins. They love their Heinz. They love their Hellmanns. Yeah. You know, uh, they are probably let's say let's say they're in the Midwest. Yeah. You know, wh how are you going to convince these people to switch over from something they grew up with to something that's for them um, untested or untried? So two ways, one, and this is a really important deal, that when people think of food, when you think of food in the audience, you're probably thinking, I go to a Target, or I go to a Walmart, or I go to a Whole Foods and I purchase it, right? But about 50% of the food that you eat, that all of us eat in the United States, comes from food service. It comes from the catering back there, right? It comes from the university cafe. It comes from whatever company you work for. McDonald's. So it's a huge, huge space, right? So with the biggest food service company in the world, if you work at, let's say, Hewlett Packard right now, or Google right now, or if you're a student at the University of Texas A&M right now, and let's say you're going up, you got your hamburger, you got your french fries, the only mayo you can use is our mayo because they did it because they think it tastes better. Now, for your cut, you said your cousin? Yeah, sure. Cousin, okay. If we can show your cousin that it makes that hamburger taste a little bit better, if it's a little bit less expensive, if it looks better on the shelf at Walmart, I bet more often than not, your cousin might be tempted to try something a little bit different. Again, because your cousin's probably like my dad, no, no offense to him, but he's not thinking consciously about how he's eating. He just wants a good hamburger, and that's fine because of the systemic approach that we're taking as opposed to trying to convince people to do the right thing, which we don't find too effective. Okay. Well, let's take a let's take a short-term look forward. 2015. You have two products officially out now. More products coming? Yes. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, when you think of when you think of food that needs to be done differently, that's where we're going. Everything from pastas to um, to yogurts uh, to all different sorts of cookies and muffins to a scrambled egg. So we uh, you've uh, um, seen it before, but we we identified one plant that when you throw it in a pan, it actually scrambles much like a chicken egg. Huh. Um, and we want to put that out there again for less expensive, we want it to taste better. And then in the future, we're working on new categories that you've never even heard of before. Again, think about refrigeration in the developing world, given that it's not there, what new categories of food, whether it's a protein snack or different sorts of things that are infused with micronutrients that we're not even thinking of today. So the, I think I might have heard from a, a source that uh, you might be working on ranch dressing. Ranch dressing. Too. Ranch dressing. That's coming out, mm. yeah. Ranch dressing mm. is coming out also. Okay. We're, la we're launch ranchy dressing with uh, Kroger, uh, and again, also with that big food service company called Compass Group. Got it. Now, so this is not the first time Josh and I have met. Uh, we were uh, on a show a while back, 
And you mentioned that Stella McCartney was visiting the offices. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, I actually saw her uh, store. Okay. I drove by. She has a store in Vegas. Is she a spokesperson? She's, she's become a really good friend to the company. Yeah, we're trying to, uh, the more that she can get close to everything what we're doing, the better for us. She's an insanely um, talented entrepreneur. She's got a great heart. Um, and she, there are a few other people like uh, John Legend has become a big fan of what we do uh, and, and some other great people. Cool. Well, uh, Josh Tetrick, Hampton Creek, thanks again for uh, taking some time out of your busy schedule to lend thanks, your Jim. insight to these folks. Good cool. to see you. Thanks a lot, brother. Appreciate yeah. it, man. Thanks, thanks guys. Thank you.